Um, but with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jackie to introduce herself and get us started. Hey everyone, it's nice to be a part of this today. I'm watching the names flash across as they're entering and I'm like, wow, some people from my past <laughs> are joining and that's, and that's great to see. And also some new faces in public health that I have not had the opportunity to work with. So I am thrilled to be here today. Um, I was supposed to be having a co-presenter that was going to help me out today, but unfortunately she woke up ill this morning. So you get just me and I will do my best to answer questions as you have them. Um, I'm luckily joined by a few other folks that are part of Oral Health Iowa or who have a connection to the oral health world that hopefully they'd be more than willing to help me out as I get stuck. Um, I see some friendly faces out there as I was uh, going through the different names. I just want to give you a little background on me. Um, like, uh, like Brett said, I'm Jackie Miller. I live in the gigantic metropolis of Fertile, Iowa, which is in Worth County up by the Minnesota border. Um, I've been in public health in Iowa since 1998, so yes, I am old. Um, I've been around for a while. Um, I started out at a county level in Northern Iowa as a health planner, grant writer, and um, a deputy director. I went to work for the state under the infamous Julie McMahon as a regional community health consultant and covered 18 counties in Northern Iowa. I see a couple of my peers have joined this as well from that, that part of my life. Um, since then, I've worked in a variety of different consulting roles in public health, and this seems to be like full circle coming back, and now I'm with Oral Health Iowa. Um, this is new to me. I've been in this position since August and working as a coordinator um, for Oral Health Iowa. I've always had an interest in oral health. I just didn't realize how connected oral health is to the overall well-being of an individual. Um, I think my greatest passion for oral health came recently when I was working as a veteran service officer for a county. I spent a lot of time working with veterans trying to navigate the VA system. And as you can imagine, the VA system is um, covered in layer after layer after layer to make your way through. But the most disappointing part is that very few veterans actually have access to oral health care. So it became kind of a passion of mine. And then it was nice that this just happened to come along and I could step into working with Oral Health Iowa. So I'm going to get started here. And like Brett said, please ask questions as we go. The last thing you want to do is sit there and listen to me talk the whole time. Um, I'm happy to have you interject as we go. It's been some time since I've been part of um, IPHA. I was a past president of IPHA many, many years ago. And um, I'm kind of actually excited to get back in, and involved with IPHA once again. So with Oral Health Iowa, a little bit about how we got started. We officially launched launched in 2020. Yep, think about that. Great time to start a coalition in the middle of a pandemic. So this is a coalition that has never met in person. They've been meeting virtually since, um, since launch of it. But the good news is things had happened and we have grown and we have gotten started in what we're doing. Um, across the state of Iowa, and I'll kind of talk about this a little bit more later, but there are several different coalitions or groups that work on oral health. It makes the state of Iowa very unique and actually wonderful because there are several states that don't even have um, a group that tries to target oral health as a coalition. Sometimes there might be a one or two person show at a state health department that's doing that, um, or it is a private funder that is trying to get something started with oral health. So it's nice that we do have so many people that are invested um, in oral health across the state. Uh, many of these coalitions are topic focused and it's nice to see some of those folks on here. Um, Gloria, feel free to interject as we go or Mary Kelly, um, I'd love to have your feedback as we go. The great thing is that there's been some great guidance in this process and not only with just those that are public health players in the state of Iowa, but also on a national level. So, and I'll kind of talk a little bit more about those folks as we go to here. So a little bit about Oral Health Iowa. Um, I thought it might be helpful for you to know what the guiding principles are um, for what we believe in. I'm not gonna read these to you. I know that you can read the screen in front of you and I don't need to be doing that. But one of those that I really wanna focus on or talk about is that we have the strength through existing oral health coalitions, like I mentioned. Um, it gives a wide variety of folks to be involved. However, many of these folks folks sit on each of these different coalitions um, within the state as well, but it makes us unique. And on a national level, there's organizations that are very interested in what the state of Iowa is doing because of that. 
And because other states are, um, are you know, having issues or concerns or having problems getting started. When I talked about oral health beginning, I think one of the greatest things that was seen was a need to have a unified voice. And that unified voice in particular came in the face of advocacy. So oral health, really, oral health Iowa has really focused on the advocacy as part of what we're doing. Just a little bit about what we have as our principles behind what we're doing. And how are we structured? Um, we are, we meaning Aaron and I, are housed with the United Way of Central Iowa. Um, Aaron serves as the coalition director. That's United Way's contribution into Oral Health Iowa. Um, if she was a part of this today, she would be talking about how there were several different focus groups that were held and oral health became a larger and uh, growing and growing issue amongst um, focus groups and things that she had been a part of. Um, like I said, then I'm serving in the role of the coordinator and keeping things happening with the coalition. We do have a leadership committee, or as we call it, a steering committee of 12 different members. And I have some of those um, organizations or entities listed there. But I thought it might be helpful for some of you to know who is actually involved um, in Oral Health Iowa as part of the steering committee. And I'm going to read them because if I don't, I'm sure I'll forget somebody. I'm sure most of you know um, all of these people that are probably part of this, but um, Dr. Haley Harvey, she's our representative from Dental Public Health. Dr. Stuffelbeam is our um, representative from the Iowa Dental Association. Bruce Thorson, um, he represents not only one of our committees that we have, but also the Iowa Dental Board. Um, Casey Fisick, um, he is part of our advocacy committee, also works for Delta Dental of Iowa. Tracy Rogers, I know some of you will know her with the Eye Smile program. Um, the oral health um, group with the state health department. Sarah Peterson, also with the state, but with community fluoridation is um, the representation that she's providing. Julie Reynolds with the University of Iowa School of Dentistry. Um, Julie brings a uni unique perspective as well for the data side of collecting information on oral health. Danella Miller represents our Iowa Dental Hygienists Association. And um, Lifelong Smiles, I think I saw Elizabeth's name pop up there. Um, Elizabeth was our representative for Lifelong Smiles on our steering committee. Um, at this point, we haven't made that, re that replacement um, yet. There are several other people that are involved in the steering committee that also have a link back to Lifelong Smiles. I could talk a little bit more about that in the future too. Um, those folks make up our steering committee and when I had mentioned that we had all these different groups across the state of Iowa, um, the goal was to make sure that those groups were all representative on the steering committee and that we were inclusive and that we were all working as a united voice um, for oral health in the state. Like with IPHA or other um, associations, we do have a national association that we're connected to. Ours is called ANOC. Um, everybody's got to have some form of alphabet soup in the public health world, but it's the American Network of Oral Health Coalitions. So currently there are 36 states that have oral health coalitions um, that are part of this. Um, the unique thing about ANOC um, is that they provide a lot of mentorship. They've provided a lot of assistance in getting things of ours up and running, um, as well as direction, lesson learned. There's no reason for us to reinvent the process if it's worked really well in some other states. We're fortunate that the state of Minnesota has a phenomenal oral health coalition, as well as the state of Kansas. Um, and those being the closest to us, also with a very similar um, population, which is they have urban and rural areas as well. Um, they've been wonderful mentors for us for the oral health coalition. I'll try to get my computer expands here. So members of Oral Health Iowa, um, they can be individuals, they can be organizations um, that support the vision and mission and the principles that I just gone over of Oral Health Iowa. Um, what you see on your screen is a list of some of those organizational membership, the members um, of Oral Health Iowa. There are a variety of different people that represent each of these different organizations and are part of um, Oral Health Iowa in one way or another. That doesn't mean you need to be an organization to join it. Uh, you can join as an individual member as well, as long as you support that vision and mission of what we are doing, um, that we are trying to unite 
um, the United Voice for Public Health and or for Oral Health in Iowa. The membership, there is no cost. Um, at this point, we are classified as an emerging coalition. And I'll get more into that a little bit later about what that means. But right now, the membership cost per se is that we ask members to be actively involved, that they participate in Rural Health Iowa activities, whether it's through a committee, um, our full group coalition meetings, or maybe they eventually want to be involved in some form of leadership role. So we just want to make sure that um, they understand that's what we ask of them is that they actively participate at this time. For Oral Health Iowa and the organizations that you see listed there, part of the reason why I think we've been seen as an emerging coalition that has great interest by other states and by national leaders is we have some amazing people in the state of Iowa associated with oral health. Many of you probably know, and I'm sure I'm going to leave somebody out of the list, but um, most recently, um, I think it was last week, that there was a national conference and um, some of you I know are part of that, if you want to correct me, but I believe Dr. Russell received a Distinguished Service Award. Um, his award came from the Association of State and Territorial Dental Directors. Um, Dr. Russell is still actively involved in Oral Health Iowa, which his leadership is greatly appreciated for what he does for us. I mentioned another one of our steering committee members is Dr. Haley Harvey. Um, she is also the incoming president um, of the Association of Public Health Dentistry. And she is replacing the current president, I believe, is Dr. Warren um, with the University of Iowa um, College, of, or College of Dentistry. So um, it's pretty wonderful that we have these folks that are involved in what we're doing in, um, um, with Oral Health Iowa. And I know that I'm missing some of you who have probably received other accolades for what you do associated with um, oral health in the state of Iowa. The one plug I would like to put out there um, as I noticed, there's a few environmental health folks on there, on this, as well as those that are involved in community water fluoridation. The state of Iowa has been recognized many, many different times. Um, it, it's funny, I even attended a meeting yesterday. These people have never met me, but the first thing out of their mouth is, wow, what Iowa does with community water fluoridation. Um, I believe Sarah Peterson, I don't know if she's on here or not, um, that she had mentioned that over 90% um, of our water systems are fluoridated. And I think there's only around seven other states that have reached that type of um, goal. So that's quite wonderful for the state of Iowa. And I know some of those folks that are part of this today were part of some many different legislations and rules that have gone through associated with that as well. So thank you for your assistance in, in advancing Iowa in that capacity as well. I'm gonna breathe a second before I go on and ask if anybody has any questions so far. Are you awake? <laughs> all I see is myself, so I want to make sure that you're still all there. All right, hearing nothing, I'm going to continue to go ahead here um, and explain a little bit about how we are funded for our coalition, especially I'm sure you're thinking, wow, they don't charge for membership. <laughs> how the heck do they do anything? Um, currently, because like I mentioned before, we're that emergent um, emerging coalition stage. We are fortunate to be funded through CareQuest, through a grant. Um, that grant allows us to strengthen our community voice for oral health, which is part of that coalition formation stage. Um, and as we go through, we, we have no idea how much of that funding will continue, but for right now, we're thankful that we do have that as well. The United Way of Central Iowa also provides funding into this, um, into Oral Health Iowa not only in the stance of um, Aaron serving as our director, but also support services that come from the United Way. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about that as well when we get to the advocacy side of things. And the greatest asset like I have there is our volunteers, our members, um, all who have a passion for oral health and are excited to see things change in advance. We do have a wonderful diverse base of our membership. And, and that's helpful as we move forward, as well as how many of these folks also serve on some of the other coalitions and um, efforts that are happening across the state of Iowa. So it's nice that we have that coordinated, um, coordinated group of individuals. So a little bit about our strategic plan, because it'll give you an idea of what we're about. Like I said, you know, we started in 2020. So 
formation was a big part of what happened. That all happened before I started, as well as coming up with some key goals that were going to be the focus of Oral Health Iowa. Again, I'm not going to read those to you. They're on the screen there, and you can look through those yourself. But there are um, two of these that I want to point out. So I work on a very part-time basis with Oral Health Iowa. I'm 10 to 15 hours a week in what I do. Um, so with that, you can imagine there is no possible way that we could address all of these things at the same time. We had asked our steering committee if they would kind of narrow that down, come up with some um, key objectives, things, uh, action steps that we wanted to accomplish within the next year so we could narrow that focus down and really dedicate the time towards making a change. So through that process, our steering committee identified goal three and goal four. So looking at workforce, which I will talk about a little bit more, as well as go for on advocacy. Those are our big pushes for this time. I was mentioning to um, Brett and Sharon before we started is advocacy obviously is a large part of what um, Oral Health Iowa is striving to do, um, to have that united voice. Um, advocacy, we all have our strengths. Advocacy is not my strength. I'm fortunate to be surrounded by wonderful people um, who that's what they enjoy doing. We have an advocacy committee that focuses on the efforts we have. Um, we also have, because of our membership, we have um, folks from the Iowa Dental Association, Delta Dental, and the United Way that serve as our advocates there at the Capitol. Um, and also gives us access to um, lobbyists that they might have associated with their organizations. Our main focus is to make sure that people are aware of what even Oral Health Iowa is and that oral health is an issue in the state of Iowa. So these are some of those key points of what we wanna make sure happens with advocacy. I'm sure it is no different than things that you might have for Public Health Association or other um, organizations that you're a part of. With advocacy though, we are still in an infancy stage. And by that, I mean, just getting people to understand that we're here. Um, <clears throat> and also trying to figure out how do we move this forward from here? That's going to be a large discussion that we have this summer is what do we need to do to advance um, our efforts in the state of Iowa? I thought it might be helpful for you to actually see uh, what our priorities were this past legislative session. Um, I know it's not completely done, but it was a unique year and I'm sure it was unique for all of us <laughs> in different ways. Um, but like I said, our primary goal during this last legislative session is to make sure people and our legislators understand that Oral Health Iowa is here. And that what we're really doing is trying to strengthen the access of oral health care across the lifespan of all Iowans. Um, that's our key thing. Underneath that, we have two different key areas that we're targeting, increasing the access to dental providers and increasing financial capacity to pay for services. Um, I am sure each of you in one way or another can relate to some of the things that are listed on here. Or you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of different things they have listed. As I had mentioned, Oral Health Iowa has a very diverse membership. And what we wanna make sure that we're doing is representing that full membership and that we're ready to respond when the need comes either at a state or a national level to any one of these efforts so that we can sign on um, with what others may be working on. Most recently, um, signing on to efforts at the national level related to um, care services for all adults uh, related to Medicaid, and also um, signing on to some veterans oral health care um, legislation that's being proposed. So with that, what we have on here, uh, increasing access for dental providers, just to give you an idea of how this all flows together, um, addressing healthcare workforce shortages and misdistribution, I am sure that all of you have heard workforce, I don't know how many different times, whether it's related to something our governor has said, and let's be real, what, what profession anymore doesn't start talking about workforce uh, shortages or concerns. Um, one of the things about oral health that I think is a little unique and has to do with increasing the funding for the FIND program, and I don't know if you know what the FIND program is or not, um, fulfilling Iowa's need for dentists, and I don't know if sure. Sarah Schlievert is on this or not. I can't see everybody's names. She is, I, she's more than welcome to interject here with me. But um, in talking with Sarah and talking with others about the healthcare workforce shortage and, <clears throat> and finding a dentist, <laughs> um, she was sharing with me 
the number of counties, and I have a map in front of me, I should have put it into my presentation actually, um, the number of counties that are high priority in the state of Iowa. And high priority, is the, the statement reads, increased funding for the FINE program to provide education loan repayment for dentists to serve high need, low access patient populations. So in the state of Iowa, high priority counties, we have 21. And what that means is that those counties have zero to one dentists, um, or the only dentist there is, is over the age of 60. Um, I live in one of those counties. I live in Worth County. And um, although we are a small county, um, one dentist can't serve everybody that is here. That's just not going to happen. Um, priority, um, high priority counties, or priority counties only, there's 65. So out of that, 86 of our 99 counties are in an area that needs dentists um, to serve the population. Um, increased funding for the Eye Smile program. I know many of you are probably aware of what the Eye Smile program is, as well as the Eye Smile Silver. When you're talking about workforce shortages, it's necessary to figure out other ways that we can connect people with dental care in their communities. And those are a couple of those programs that would increase access to dental providers. In addition to that, um, looking at increasing financial capacity to pay for dental care. Um, I'm sure it's no surprise to some of you that <laughs> the financial barrier associated with Medicaid and dental reimbursement rates. I think um, even if you aren't in the oral health world, you've probably heard a little bit about dental reimbursement rates, or even you might have had the own ex your own experience in um, oral health care, whether or not you have dental insurance and what is covered. Um, in talking with the Iowa Dental Association, who this is, this was their main push this year is trying to get those um, Medicaid dental reimbursement rates aligned with Hawkeye. Um, you know, I asked him, I said, if you can give me an example, you know, what is the difference? If, if somebody um, is on Medicaid, what is the dentist being paid for that? And their, their example they gave me was that, so if you're gonna get a, a filling, um, a customary filling would be around $215, $217, I said. So if you had Medicaid, the reimbursement rate for that is $72. So dentists are receiving 33% of what their fee is for providing that service. So really wanting to get those dental reimbursement rates to be equal with Hawkeye. Also making sure that in that ask that our legislators didn't decide to change something with the Hawkeye program. So making sure that we were maintaining that same access um, to the current Hawkeye dental program and also maintaining a comprehensive adult dental Medicaid benefit. Um, again, with our legislative priorities, I can't say this enough. It's this, we're really trying to be a unified voice among oral health champions in Iowa in going through this process. I'm gonna stop there for a second. I think advocacy is something that we can all relate to. Does anybody have any questions on on any of that? No? Nobody has anything? Okay. Well, just you wait. I'm going to call on a few of you here in just a second. <laughs> um, the other priority area, if you remember me mentioning, is um, workforce. Um, so with a no coalition comes how do we figure out how to deal with this workforce issue? And our steering committee really pinpointed the fact that we need to figure out what's going on in other states that works. Um, what is it that we can do to address um, workforce issues and creating other successful programs in the state of Iowa? Um, so when we talk about workforce, to give you an idea, it's not just dentists, it's dental hygienists, it's dental assistants. Um, we have several different areas in which we need assistance in the state of Iowa to provide dental care. Um, also incorporates the idea of an integrated system between um, dental and medical type of model. Um, and I know that integrated systems like that have been talked in public health in a lot of different arenas. It's no different in oral health as I'm learning. It's very similar as well. Um, I am going to ask, I had asked Mary Kelly if she would address this before, but I thought, you know, I'm not an expert in this area as at all. And I think it'd be interesting for you guys to hear a little bit about um, what's happening in the state of Iowa related to workforce and um, a dental apprenticeship program. Um, so Mary, would you be willing to jump in for a second and give a little update on what that type of program is? Sure. Thanks, Jackie. You're explaining it well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so right now, Pre the coalition actually forming in 2020, um, 
during the formation stages, they thought workforce was a definite issue and dental assisting workforce in particular. And so there was a kind of a subcommittee of the forming coalition who was addressing dental assisting workforce. And it is uh, dental assistance is one of the governor's um, areas, recognized areas of workforce shortage. And so the dental board um, in the meantime also has had meetings on uh, on workforce issues. And they had a series of four, maybe three meetings. Um, and most of them really talked about dental assistance. Right now to be a dental assistant in Iowa, you have to have, um, take three different tests uh, test on infection control, radiology, and jurisprudence, and then be on the job trained for at least six months. You can have formal education as well. So they were looking to see if any of those rules could be changed uh, in order to um, in order to increase the workforce and increase the people staying in the workforce, um, just like most people or you know most low uh, the younger age that assistants were being trained and then leaving after the first year or year and a half. So the um, this subcommittee of the group was uh, involved. Um, the Department of Labor, some Iowa workforce development people, um, Central Iowa Works, who has an apprenticeship program, as well as um, the dental safety net clinics in the Des Moines area. And I was involved because at that time I was on the Iowa Dental Board. And we discussed different workforce models or workforce training. But um, the apprenticeship program in Iowa is one year long. And so with the Dental Board only requiring six months of uh, of training for the dental assistants that really wasn't working out. And so we just put together a hybrid program um, that we just presented on Monday to the employers. And it is going to be baseline training. It's a series of videos and competency checklists um, that is baseline training. So the dental assistant uh, could look at these videos and see them and, uh, and then go and do the work. And so it's less formal education than you get at DMAC or um, some other of the formalized programs. You can move at your own pace with it. And it will also prepare you to take these three exams um, that dental assistants have to take. There is a lot of uh, testing anxiety that was, um, that was expressed over these three testing, uh, these three required tests before. So, uh, and another require, and, and in the meantime, too, during the, de the dental board now is looking at maybe even reducing um, the six months training into they just have to take the three tests. Um, so that's all being under works. We'll know more in the fall, but we have the pilot program that's ready to launch in the next couple of weeks um, through the safety and employers in central Iowa. And anybody can contact me uh, because this program is meant to be replicable and used within private practices as well. Thanks, Mary. Said much better than I ever could have explained that. So I have barely. That. I, I hope I didn't <laughs> confuse everybody even more because there are a lot of moving pieces to it, especially in the middle of all this. The dental board just changed their is in the process of rule changing after we had been developing this program. So it's good. Thanks. Um, I was quickly scrolling through the list of participants while while Mary was talking because there are several of you on here that are very. Um, very involved in, in a variety of different oral health initiatives that are happening in the state of Iowa. And it's because of folks like Mary and others that are on here, Gloria, I saw your name as well. Um, Sarah, I saw that you were on too, that without those experts behind you, they're the ones that make me really know, I mean, are helping me to understand what I'm supposed to be doing, make me look sometimes like I know what I'm doing. And I can't thank them enough for their support in making sure we advance oral health in the state of Iowa. So just a thank you out to each of you for what you do. So with that, um, thank you real quick. There's a question in okay. the chat from um, from IPHA. That one would be Lena, not me. She asks, "Is dental education included in the last dollar scholarship program?" Is dental education in the what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand the rest of that. Um, included in the last dollar scholarship program. I do not know the answer to that. Does um, Sarah? Do you happen to know? Sarah Schlievert, I think I saw you on here. I do not know. Um, 
if someone can't speak to that, I will definitely find out the answer and get that back to you so you can share that back out. I'm sorry, Lena, I do not know the answer. That's okay. Um, my the last I just learned about it within the past year. The last dollar scholarship program funds students who are going into high demand occupations, um, and like nursing is one of them. And um, and so I just wasn't sure if if dental was a part of that. And if not, that there will be another area of advocacy. And Jackie, I'm, to not, get it included. I'm not familiar with that program either. Okay, thanks, sir. And, and I'm not either, but I know Central Iowa Works is getting funds um, from many different sources. And so that might be one of them. And I can ask that as well. Okay, I'll look up the, and see if, I, if I can find the link, I'll put it in the chat. Hey, great, thank you. Did you say there are any other questions, Brett, or is that it? No, that was it for now. Okay, all right. Um, so <laughs> with all that said, um, I was at the crossroads of wondering, should I really talk about Oral Health Iowa and, and what should I explain about it? Um, and a little bit about the future. So we have some unique opportunities that lie ahead for sustainability and growth. And it's not just Oral Health Iowa, it's for oral health in general um, in the state of Iowa. And so I kind of want to explain where we, where we sit. Um, I can't say this enough, how we have, you know, we're unique. We have four statewide oral health coalitions or initiatives. They have different successes. They have different activities that they're part of and um, should all be celebrated for what they have accomplished. So not, you know, if you look at it, um, we have Oral Health Iowa, we have Lifelong Smiles, which I'm sure you've heard about in the past as well. I mentioned the community water fluoridation and Cavity Free Iowa. Like with anything, we, we all know that we need to figure out a way to work um, together so that things can be sustainable um, as well as continue and how we can do that smarter and how we can do that better together. So since we are in this unique stage um, with some changes with lifelong smiles that happened at the end of the year. Um, Elizabeth Faber, who had been a part of leading that coalition for many years, moved on to other things as we all know, um, and very hard shoes to fill for all the, all the things she did for lifelong smiles. Um, kind of brought us together to decide, you know, is there something we could be doing we could all be doing together? Are there roles and responsibilities that we could be sharing? Is there a better way that we can sustain all of our efforts. So starting at the beginning of this year of 2022, we were focusing on how we could work more together under one. And umbrella isn't the right word, and I'm not even going to figure out what the right word is. I don't even know what to call this. Uniting forces, um, that's all things that have not been um, determined what it should be called. So I don't want to um, focus on how that's described, but basically, you know, that we have one type of organizational structure. Um, that might house things like, and I'm just throwing these out there, might house our strategic direction, might house sustainability and, and membership and have a large advocacy wing where we can do a lot more together um, through a variety of different funding. And then underneath there, maybe we have, um, whether it's chapters or committees, with every coalition, there's always a growing stage. And, you know, IPHA is no different. That's really changed since I was actively involved as well and how that is structured. But coming together and having some type of centralized and you know, working together in a unified way. So discussions are starting. What are, what are we doing about that? We have obtained funding um, through United Way grants as well as the Dental, uh, Delta Dental Foundation of Iowa um, to work together to figure that out. Um, we're hiring a strategic planner that will help all of us come together to figure out what is it that we want? What's, what can be our main mission together? How would this look in the future? And how would we move forward? Um, so, we, you know, it's hard to talk about because we don't know how it's going to look. Um, what's it going to be called? No clue. Have no idea what it's going to be called. We don't want to lose um, any of that that's been achieved by any of these different groups. We need to make sure that's encompassing of our full state efforts. And what's the final structure gonna be? No clue there either. But it's also very exciting because it gives the opportunity for us to do more and move forward. Um, we're lucky we have, um, we have some national support behind this as well. Um, as the coordinator for Oral Health Iowa, I was recently selected to be part of a, a collaborative um, associated with oral health coalitions. 
and working forward with this. So um, I'll also be granted a mentor uh, and a mentor state that will help with um, how they've managed to navigate systems like this as well. Um, the good thing that's part of this, and I, and I really open this up to some of you um, that are also involved in this, and correct me if I'm wrong, my interpretation is that the thing is, about it is that we're all committed to oral health in Iowa, which is amazing. We all have um, a passion for making sure that happens. We have a passion for making sure that our legislators are educated about oral health in the state of Iowa and how it impacts overall well-being. And um, what that brings in the future, I don't know. Maybe I'll be back in another year talking about what that new formation um, looks like in our state related to oral health. Um, you know, we have changes that are happening at the state level with a realignment and how might that impact what we're doing as well? We just don't know. And, you know, none of us really like change in the end. Um, however, I think we all um, are eager to see how things can improve and how we can really make a statement, not only in the state of Iowa, but also nationally when it comes to oral health. So with that, even though you know we don't know exactly what we are or who we are, which is a poor way to end a presentation, isn't it? Um, but we would like you to join us. If you're interested at all or have a passion at all about oral health and you would like to join our coalition, there is a membership form you can fill out on our website. Um, if you have any general questions about it, you can certainly reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer those at any time. Um, I will be at the Public Health Conference of Iowa. So if you have time to stop by and you'd like to chat, chat about it, then I'd like to talk with you as well about Oral Health Iowa or Oral Health Initiatives in the state of Iowa in general. <laughs> so with that, that's about all I have to say. I don't like to just sit and talk to you without the interaction coming from the other side. So do you guys have any questions for me or for anybody else on here that might be able to answer them better than I am um, capable of doing that? But I'd be happy to entertain those or at least get the answers for you from um, the experts and get it back to you. Gloria, I'm going to pick on you. Do you have anything you would like to say about, yeah. I don't know if I described that. Um, Gloria sure. serves as the chair of Life yeah. on Smiles. So Gloria that's why I'm calling on her. <laughs> yeah, I have a scratchy throat here today. But as you were talking, I was thinking, um, and I like the term, a structure, an inclusive structure for oral health in Iowa. And um, because that's what we're doing, we're, the four groups are transitioning and bringing together the best of each one of those coalitions or organizations, uh, being careful that we don't lose any energy or any successes, but coming together to cover all of the bases to uh, whether it's advocacy or education of professionals. Um, it's a huge trip, but I think it's going smoother than any of us had anticipated. And I think in two years, we're gonna celebrate. Thank you, Gloria. I see Eileen, there's a hand up, go ahead, Eileen. Yep. Me, actually, and, and good to connect with you, Jackie. It's been a few years. It's been a, quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I just wanted to, to weigh in a little bit because, you know, having experienced oral health from just multiple perspectives, I, I uh, love the idea of you looking at this as a more integrated model. It just, I feel it's gonna offer um, greater clarity and seamless access to resources and other support. Uh, it's, because otherwise it's confusing. It's confusing as a professional, as a consumer. Uh, so, so good work. I'm glad you're taking this strategic approach. Thanks a lot. Yep, it's, it's not going to be an easy road. It's going to be a lot of challenging, a lot of um, learning along the way, but it is exciting. Does anybody else have any questions? No? Are there any questions? You can go ahead and unmute or just throw it in the chat. Either way works.
by the way, thanks to those of you who sent me. Um, hello, nice to see you. I haven't seen some of you for many years, so I am looking forward to seeing several of you at the conference. If you're going to be there. Like I said, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any, um, any other questions for me or if you're interested in being part of the process or learning more about it. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me while you're eating your lunch today. Um, thank you very much for that opportunity and I look forward to working more with you, all of you in the future. I do want to put a plug in for um, other people joining us. I think what made Lifelong Smiles, one of the coalitions, so successful was the diverse membership in it. You know, Department of Education, well, maybe not Department of Aging, a lot of different departments that are not just dental um, have come out, um, come or are a part of that. And Elizabeth, you might be able to help me stumble through who are our diverse membership, but it really has made. Um, that coalition so successful. And so I would encourage people that, you know, like from disabilities or just, you know, any, uh, we had home care, um, healthcare associations or caregivers associations. Elizabeth, you wanna help me out with some more memberships, which I think add to the success? Yeah, um, school nurse association, schools, anyone that has a mouth or serves people with a mouth. I mean, pretty much it's all, and we all know in the field of public health that oral health is very important. And um, so in all aspects of care from um, the industry, from the nursing home and um, long-term care facilities and all of those associations, as well as just the dental professionals. So it's, um, not just talking about cavities. There's lots of things that uh, oral health can impact health in a lot of different ways and also um, workforce, um, people taking off work for um, oral pain or their uh, children's oral pain. I mean, it just impacts so much of society. And yes, like Mary said, we found lots of different um, partners that were didn't didn't know how important oral health was to their uh, the people they serve or the people that work for them. Yeah, it just got me to yes, thinking be about quiet. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I know where you live. She only lives a few miles from me, so I can easily find Elizabeth when I need to, um, which is great. You know, one thing I did want to mention is, you know, one of our things that we discussed as a steering committee yesterday that we really want to focus now on over the summer months as well is um, actively engaging our legislators in things that are happening at a local level. So I thought I would bring that up here because those of you who are at a local level, if there's some way of engaging um, your local legislators in something related to oral health, please let me know. It's important for them to know how hard it is to access oral health care. So for an, an example, um, one of our local eye smile coordinators around here that I have talked to, talked about um, a child who was in the hospital for some time needed oral health surgery, but no payment source for it. Um, and that child was um, unable to thrive. You know, those are, those are things that I think the legislators need to understand how hard it is to gain access to care for some of these folks um, who end up traveling some distance outside of, our, of the area and transportation is an issue to get to that. Um, we really are gonna try to engage those folks in the summer uh, to learn a lot more about oral health, um, just so they can understand how it impacts an individual. And then when it comes time for being back in session about what is it they can do to help improve the oral health of their, um, of their constituents. And so if you have something at a local level that you would like to be a part of, please let me know as well. Um, Obviously not everybody is involved in Oral Health Iowa that can provide that assistance and make those connections for us. So I'd appreciate any of that if you have ideas as well. Any other questions for myself or anybody else that's been able to address oral health as well? All right, well, that's it for me then, Brett. <laughs> All right, sounds good. If there's any other questions, go ahead and pop in and interrupt me. Otherwise, I think I'll go ahead and close this out. Um, thank you, Jackie, for coming and spending time talking with us today. Thanks, everybody who chimed in. Thanks, everybody who had questions. And thanks to all of you who came and spent your lunch time with us. Uh, we hope you can join us again next month. I think it'll be on the 19th. We'll be joined by Kate Wanger, who will uh, talk with us about community engagement at Broadlands Medical Center. We're always looking for potential topics for future lunch and learns. We're scheduled through the end of this season, which is coming to a 
close here soon, but we're still looking for some for next year. So if you have any ideas, um, go ahead and email any one of us uh, and we'll get you on the schedule. Um, showcase your work or the work of any of your colleagues. Um, but just a reminder, as a nonprofit organization, IPHA relies on membership dues and sustaining donors to support our mission. Um, if not already a member, please consider joining IPHA. You can do that at iowapha.org. Students, uh, if we have any here, you can check with your department chair. Some programs have funds to support your membership. Um, if you are a member, we thank you, and we appreciate any donation that fits within your budget. Uh, the recording of this Lunch and Learn and all previous ones will be on Iowa Public Health Association's YouTube channel. We also find some other webinars and things that you may have missed or like to revisit. Uh, with that, thank you all again for coming. We hope to see you next month.